just wanted to give y'all an update. I got AC on, it's really cold. But I went ahead and undid the ground side of it. So just for anybody doing this, you have to hook up the crank, you have to hook up your cam, and you have to hook up your 12 bolt sides and you don't need your grounds. So that's just less wiring to have to worry about. And I just wrap everything up and, and um, electrical tape and zip ties. All right, good morning. So the long weighted conversion module we need and i need to explain a couple of things to you before we get started on how we're going to do so this is my 2002 pontiac trans am it currently has an l76 in it which is an ls2 bottom end fourth gen with ls3 top end that's pretty much the gist of it came out of a pontiac g8 gt it's been uh, a lot of work's been done to it now, that's not the point the point is we have a 58 tooth crank and we have a 4x cam which the sensors moved up front for the fourth gens what we have done is we are running our factory ecu so we can have all of our gauges cruise control if i want a traction control ac fans all of that stuff's ran off of the factory ecu I have piggybacked it off of the Holly Terminator that is mounted under my dash here. So when I went to a 58 tooth crank, the original car was a 24 tooth crank. And now that ECU cannot tell the engine's running. So my fans didn't work, which I, by how I made that work was I, I used the Holly now to control my fans. But my AC still doesn't work and my cruise control so we have bought this conversion kit this module and i'm going to use it to let the factory ecu know the car or the engine is running so saying all that i hope you're following me because I, I this kind of has to be a little bit of talking to explain what needs to happen so this helps somebody else so as you see like i said we had a fit we have a 58 tooth crank and this is made to convert it to a 24 tooth trigger conversion. And how we're gonna do that is, is with these wires. So let's see which one. This, a, the 58 tooth uses a five volt signal wire. 24 tooth uses a 12 volt signal. And that's the issue. The issue is this five versus 12. So what we're gonna to have to do now is start removing some of my loom and show my wiring that has been modified heavily. And I haven't really cleaned it up, cleaned it up because I knew I would be doing this. So you can see I have all these wires with splices I don't, and then the electrical tape, there's wires that I have blocked off. I think this one's gonna say crank. So I have already tapped into the car's harness this is already feeding off my crank sensor and that's what i'm saying this isn't going to be bad for me because now this one's already getting fed 58 or my signal out so now i just have to splice this in it's already ended to the um that conversion box so what i did was i just cut this very special expensive module all up i took eight inches off of each end um, I did double check our wiring over here and like I wasn't like what about duplicate colors and that's why I wasn't scared because this is five volt and then that's five volt and then like this ground brown all these browns are all grounds so any duplicate cutter colors we have they're easy to manipulate and figure out but I needed it cut like this because like I said I want to mount this under my dash and I need this ran through the firewall this is what we have going on ECU's out um batteries disconnected all the loom pulled back you see my firewall plug here i need to silicone it again one day because water does get in the car i drive this car they i mean as long as there ain't salt on the ground i'm driving it so anyways so that's why we had to cut all this back get our connector so we can feed our wiring through that um through that garment same thing in here I pulled up the panel that runs here. I pulled down the under dash pad. I do got water in the car, so it's kind of a, 
a needed thing to do because like i said I, I was it's been raining a lot here and so it's all wet and i don't need this to get mildewed i did por 15 this about two or three years ago but anyways so i want to mount it somewhere you know like i don't know just wherever it zip ties up the best and i'm gonna feed the wires through that uh, firewall uh, garment. So let me figure out where I want. I use some that lacing wire, safety wire, and conduit. Ran it through. Only got a blue and a white wire. Some scrap wiring I have. I, I'm just going to hook up these two. I only need crank signal. That's the only thing the car needs. The Holly does everything else, and I need to hook up power and ground. And all these other wires, I, I'm not going to hook up and see where it goes uh i've done this previously with the when the car was a 4.8 24 tooth and the only wire i had hooked up was the crank signal and the car worked perfectly so we're going to try it again i'll let you know how it okay works. so i'm really hoping this is going to work i tied up my five volt wires together i think it's five volts yep five volts together see what's the other one purple tied those up together because we don't want those potentially arcing and frying this module you see where i took the module in it kind of just fits behind here really nicely i have our ground hooked up by using a test light to find me a switch 12 volt i haven't uh heat shrinked it yet compass and do a test run let me show you the outside of the car for the most part we have everything back by our loom uh this is the white wire going in so this is 58 tooth signal into it. And this is, should be our 24 tooth back into our factory ECU. And this works, so we're just gonna tie everything up. It's definitely not gonna like it by an indicator. It's gonna to wanna to see the cam to sync, but I don't wanna hook that up. Uh, just more splicing and everything that I don't need. I do think there's a cam wire somewhere in here. But like I said, if I don't have to, I'm not going to run it. Okay, so a couple of things we're going to see. Uh, we should see our tack jump, maybe. AC should go on, come on, and we should get a warning light to go out. Let's see. Because it doesn't like... Let's see, radio off. I don't know. Oh, we got a light down there, so I think... I can't remember what red meant, but red, at least we got power and ground. So let's start it. Oh, I don't think it's liking it. It's flashing green. We shouldn't have any cam, but our attack didn't move. Let's see if our AC turns on. That's what. That's the biggest reason I'm doing this is for AC. So here's our instructions. So red indicates power on, no input signals, normal for key on, engine off. So that's cool. We didn't get a solid. We got a blinking. No camshaft signal when crank detected. So yeah, dang. I was really hoping not to hook up the cam sensor. What I'm really hoping is I don't have to um, hook up the other wires too. I'm kind of okay with hooking up just two more wires but that'd be pretty disappointing so let's see so i'm getting to where i print off stuff now because the internet forums are slowly going away but this is off lt1swap.com it is for an ls uh, 2001 ls engine controls so i'm going to find figure five which i have all the figures printed off and here we go i think where's my figure yeah figure five we need to find our cam position sensor. Uh, let's see, this is our power wire on C. Our signal so is A, and that's going to be brown and white. So I need to find C1, which usually tells you what C1 is. Blue, we need to do the blue connector and go to 73 and find this wire. Because that's where we're going to tie into our uh, our module here. So we ran our green and yellow wire, which yellow is cam in. So that's coming off of the 54 tooth, or sorry, the four channel crank sensor. And the way I'm keeping it together is I know the five volt is the engine side. 
And then our green is the 12 volt side and that's the part that needs to go into the ECU is which what we have here. If this works, I'll tie everything up. I'll show you the inside of the car. So inside, kind of simple. I ran it back through our loom here and then I'll tie everything up as our positive, which I still need a heat shrink, I think. No, it's, it's down. But anyways, yeah, so uh, time to crank up the car. Not gonna lie, if this isn't working, I'm gonna be really, really disappointed because that means we're probably gonna have to figure out our 12 volt and five volt side of wiring. And I hope the engineers didn't build that into that because it should be supplying five volts to it. But being our light worked and was blinking, hopefully not. So I'm gonna watch this tack gauge. Yeah, Man, I mean, it came up cause I got power. And we're red, which means the LED's right there, which means we're um, key, key on, engine off. Let's fire it up. So this is where the doubt starts coming in. Uh, do I have a issue with the ground on the uh, engine side of the house? So what we're gonna do is, uh, I've got all my grounds for the sensors at what would be the sensor, and I have grounded it to the chassis, and let's see if that works. And if that doesn't work, then we'll go to a 12 volt side, cause that's easy. I can tap into a 12 volt. I'll probably just tap in right here. See if that works, and then lastly, we'll try this, and then we'll know that it is what it is. So let's start as easy as possible. Round three. Let's see. We'll know if the tap comes up. Still nothing. All right, we'll move on to the next one. So I didn't heat shrink, uh, as I said earlier, the hot wire or the, the key on to the module and i just have a jumper over to the purple wire and let me double check pretty sure this is 12 volt and let's try it again Confirmed. that is the 12 volt i really out of anything so far other than the, the ground i believe that this is more likely to work before the 5 volt is just because sometimes they could use like the 12 volt source um to help bring the voltage um, there's some things like, oh, they call them like power up resistors and stuff like that. So this wouldn't surprise me if it worked, but let's just hope. It'd be bittersweet, really. All right, we're up. Let's watch that tack. Ha! It worked, baby. So that 12 volt source did work. Let's try our AC now. That's on. Okay, guys, I'm going to end this video off here. I'm gonna tie everything up now. Uh, the AC got down to 38 degrees. It wasn't my compressor. It was actually my uh, radiator hose. So we put a old worm worm clamp on it, and that's it. This is uh. So if you got a holly and you're piggybacking and you need to, you got a fourth gen that needs to be working with your third gen LS. You can you can just hack everything up and. Uh, and make it work like we did. So the only thing you don't you have to hook up everything but your five volts. But um yep, so I'm gonna tie everything up and move on to the next video.